Okay, so this question says, suppose a spaceship heading straight towards Earth at some speed. Let me call this V1. It can shoot a canister at some speed. Let me call this V2 prime. Uh, V2 prime relative to the ship. Um, it asks, what is the velocity of the canister relative to Earth if it is shot directly at Earth? And if it, oh, I see. So it could be actually going either way. Um, so I think I've done similar questions before, and I probably did those other questions using the relativistic velocity transformation um, uh, formulas that you can look up from the textbook. And if I know myself, I've told you how much I hate these formulas. So since I've done the question that way before, I think, uh, let me show you how I would do this if I don't have access to the textbook. Let's say I'm doing some relativity questions and I, uh, this just came up and I um, have to do it without making any reference to anything. And I gotta tell you, I don't have that relativistic velocity transformation formula memorized because I hate it. <laughs> um, let me show you how I would do this just using simple Lorentz transformation. So first, I gotta give a more physical quantity, physical reality to this object. So let me say my spaceship has mass m1 and my canister has mass m2. This is going to help me write a few things down. And really what I'm going to be using to answer this question is Lorentz transformation. I have this just uh, memorized. And the format in which I have this memorized is actually in this matrix form. It's a um, transformation. It's a multiplication by a 4 by 4 matrix that will transform a set of coordinates. Uh, time, ct, and the space coordinate, x, y, z, from a, uh, uh, from a reference frame. Let's say Earth is my unprimed frame. Wait, is? Yeah, Earth, my, uh, Earth is my unprimed frame, s frame. And my, um, and my spaceship is my primed frame, s prime frame. And what the Lorentz transformation does is it uh, transforms the expression of coordinates in the unprimed frame to the primed frame. CT prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime. And there's a beauty to Lorentz transformation, which is how I actually have it just memorized. I can just write it down, watch. So, um, so I have gamma here. Um, and then gamma here, and then one, one for this, and it's a block diagonal matrix. Uh, what it means is, you know, nothing's happening to Y and Z components. Really, everything that's interesting is happening here. A mixing of time and space coordinates. So I have gammas on the along the diagonal, and I have minus gamma beta on the for the off diagonal elements. And as a reminder, this is how these symbols are defined. My beta is the speed measured in the speed of light unit. So beta is a number between zero and one. And my gamma is one over square root of one minus beta squared. This, this is why I write down beta first. Writing down beta first makes gamma slightly simpler. So let's just double check that I remember this, this Lorentz transformation correctly. I imagine a space-time coordinate with, um, I don't know. Um, so I, I guess uh, for the uh, time component, I don't care really so much, CT. But let's say I'm looking at a fixed point like Earth. Um, let's say x is equal to zero. And as I look at that point from the point of the spaceship, and you'll have to imagine the spaceship is actually uh, starting from Earth at time equals zero so that the origins match. I multiply by minus, minus gamma beta, zero, zero, minus gamma beta, gamma, 
zero 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 one zero 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 one and the transform the coordinate imagining multiplying this all out for the time I have gamma CT for the and I get non zero x coordinate which is what I want minus gamma beta CT yeah I think that makes sense because as the spaceship starts out from here and moves in the plus x direction Earth is falling farther and farther in the negative x direction. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So this is the Lorentz transformation. And you might be wondering, but um, if I'm working with this, I'm, am I not going to simply end up rewriting the formulas that are in the textbook? Well, watch. The beauty of Lorentz transformation and the physical quantity that you will see me call four vectors is that space-time coordinates are not the only examples of four vectors. Uh, think about um, the regular vectors. So the space coordinates, uh, like x uh, as a like the you know x y z, that's an example of a vector. But you have seen other vectors in in your physics education. Velocity is a vector, acceleration is a vector, force is a vector, and momentum is a vector, and there's probably a few more that I'm not mentioning. Uh, with a, so, you know, uh, starting out with a vector as an arrow in physical space, you can actually uh, describe other quantities having similar properties as coordinates. And the same property holds in special relativity. What you have to be careful is that um, some of these quantities that you are used to thinking of having similar mathematical properties as um, your space vector is not going, that kind of relationship won't quite hold in special relativity. So you have to know well um, which quantities form four vectors and which quantities don't. This is an example of four vector. And if I simply wrote down um, kind of, you know, so I, I let me call this my uh, four vector position vector. And if I simply uh, did something like take the derivative, time derivative of this and get some quantity here, you will find that this is, it's not an example of four vector. And this is really the primarily the reason I hate dealing with the velocity transformation formula. Because the velocity, the way we are used to thinking about it in a natural way, is not a four vector, the transformation laws look ugly. So really what I, my first challenge here is finding another four vector that I can easily transform using Lorentz transformation. And that example is right here. Momentum forms a four vector. It, it forms an energy momentum four vector. So in terms of the energy momentum four vector, this is how um, the transformation looks like. I think I have a lecture of this uh, actually. So uh, energy momentum Lorentz transformation looks like this. First, I put together uh, for momentum, combination of energy and momentum. I do have to be a little bit careful to um, make the units come out right. So uh, the, my zeroth component is going, the time component is going to be energy. And I usually write it as energy divided by C. So then my momentum uh, components will just come out without factors of C. So X component, Y component, C component. And without proving, I will assert that this forms a, a four vector, by which I mean if I'm looking for the values of this energy and the momentum in the primed coordinate, then all I have to do is uh, multiply this uh, column vector by the Lorentz transformation that will transform um, what uh, any kind of, you know, momentum of Earth, for example, is in frame S into what momentum of Earth is in the primed uh, frame. So 
Lorentz transformation is still the same. Gamma minus gamma beta zero zero minus gamma beta gamma zero 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 one zero 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 one. So what I can do is I think from the given information I actually have enough information here to give an expression for my um, energy in the prime the coordinate. Uh, energy of the canister in the prime the coordinate and the momentum of the canister in the prime the coordinate. So um, its uh, momentum would be uh, this, uh, or it will be associated with this. Let me give this uh, subscript to C. So it's going to be gamma C, its a mass, rest mass, M. Oh, wait, I already gave it a number. Uh, let me call this, um, I'm going to just uh, continue using this uh, numbering C. So um, everything associated with, the, with this will get a subscript 2. So gamma 2, m2, uh, v2 prime. And uh, just uh, writing, out, uh, writing it out numerically. So v2 prime is 0 0.55c. So this would be m2 times 0.55c divided by, and I can just write gamma 2 as a pure number, square root of 1 minus um, 0 0.55 squared. So that's its momentum. And its energy would be gamma 2 m2 c squared. So it will be m2 times c squared divided by square root of 1 minus 0 0.55 squared. And if we ever need its speed v2 prime, the quickest way to get a numerical value for v2 prime is to actually utilize what cancels out and maybe what doesn't cancel out in these expressions. So v2 prime over c is going to be the momentum times c divided by energy. Just to double check here that everything cancels out except v2 prime over c. And if I do the calculation here, I end up getting 0 0.55 as expected. And just to, going over all of this with the quantities that we already know in the uh, S prime frame. So if we want to figure out what are these quantities, all we really have to do is take everything here and multiply on the left by the inverse transformation, inverse Lorentz transformation. And I'll just write this down without proving it. It's actually quite simple. The inverse Lorentz transformation looks very similar, except minus turn into plus. You can kind of think of it uh, like this Lorentz transformation is for a frame that's uh, moving in the plus x direction. So the inverse is a frame that's uh, moving in the minus x direction relative to that, and that just means uh, reversing the signs that you see. And you can mathematically prove that when you multiply these two matrices together, you get identity. So multiplying both sides by this, what you should end up with on the right-hand side is the energy and the momentum of the canister in the frame as in the earth frame. And once you have earth frame energy and momentum quantities, we can use this formula. So this is the prime the frame quantities. Once you somehow have the earth frame energy, the earth frame momentum, then to get the earth frame V2, all you have to do is, uh, well, V2 over C is the earth frame momentum times C divided by earth frame energy. And whatever numerical value you have, that will be the answer. So let me give that a try. So um, let's just program in some of the quantities. Uh, how do I do this? Um, let me do it this way. I'm going to first declare my variables. Um, so my variables will be um, 
uh, let me do it this way. Uh, gamma 2, M2, and C, and uh, let me uh, say beta 2. Yeah, so with this, I can write out expressions for E prime, uh, which will be gamma 2 times m2 times c squared and my momentum prime is gamma 2 times m2 times beta 2 times c okay yeah and uh, let me make sure i can plug in the numbers ep substitute so i can substitute in uh, first the gamma 2 to be um, uh, 1 over square root of 1 minus beta 2 squared. And then a second substitute, um, beta is 0 0.55. Oh, beta 2 is. Yeah, all right. That gives me numerical quantities, and I can do that for momentum as well. Okay, good. So the what, what's left to do is that uh, Lorentz transformation. So I'm taking these quantities and multiplying by this square matrix. So my unprimed energy will be, um, or unprimed energy divided by C, um, or, or multiplying through by C, my unprimed energy will be uh, gamma times um, the, my EP plus gamma, uh, wherever I see gamma, it's actually gamma 2. Gamma 2 times beta 2 times uh, PP. Let's see if that uh, expression makes sense. Oh, uh, I'm missing some factors of C. Let me make sure. So <laughs> if this divided by C was... Uh, this, then when I multiply through by C, this is going to go, but there will be a, a additional factor of C. Okay. Yeah, I think my C is look like. And my momentum is going to be gamma. I'm looking at the second row here. So gamma beta times E. So gamma 2 times beta 2 times E prime plus um, gamma times momentum, gamma 2 times momentum prime. And again, um, really, the for unit consistency, oh, I guess I'll just divide by C, yeah. So with that, this is the momentum. All right, looks kind of reasonable. So for the speed, what we are looking for is momentum times C divided by E. So let's plug in the numbers and see. What we are substituting in is exactly what we had here. So we get a number of 0 0.845. Let's give that a try. So this was for if the canister was uh, shot directly at Earth, because that's how I drew it. That's how I kind of assumed the things are going. Should be at going at 0 0.845 in the earth frame. Let me just four five. Did I miss something? Oh, oh, oh I um, mixed up two different gammas. So um, yeah, the gamma twos here are fine. Um, these gammas, uh, they are not gamma two. I was entering them like they were gamma twos. But those gammas come from V1. So let me just uh, give the specification so that I don't confuse myself. So the gamma here, it comes from the V1. So it'll be 1 over square root of 1 minus uh, V1 squared over C squared. And the beta C here is V1 over C. All right, let me make sure I have that. Um, so I gotta re-enter some of the form, and I have to declare my gamma and beta, which will be treated separately. Um, yeah. 
So yeah, these are fine. I don't need to redefine them. But here, all the gamma twos and beta twos should be really just gamma and beta. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Gamma twos. Um, yeah, that's the correct Lorentz transformation. And in addition to this, I need to substitute in uh, what the gamma is. Um, that's one over square root of one minus beta squared, and then what beta is. Beta is um, 0.71, I think that's the number I had, yeah, 0.71. So we do these correct numbers, 0 0.906 is what I have. Let's see, 0 0.906. Yeah, that's it. Um, now, if the velocity of the canister uh, is relative to Earth, if uh, it is shot directly away from Earth, it's actually pretty simple. You can just do it directly here. So in all this, um, beta 2, we are saying it's 0 0.55 before. Well, if it's fired in the other direction, it's a minus 0 0.55. And I get a speed of 0 0.26. And that means it's uh, still moving towards Earth. Um, I guess that's right. The spaceship is moving that much faster. So 0 0.262 or 263. 0 0.263 is the, yeah. So that's the. Uh, velocity of the canister relative to Earth. And I re recognize this is a much longer way of doing a question that one might think, isn't it simpler to simply look up the formula? And my answer is not in the long term, because um, especially for those of you who might be dealing with a special relativity in more regular basis, I'm talking to potential future physics majors, physics grad students, uh, this four-vector formalism is a really powerful formalism. Uh, if you learn how to use it, you'll be able to handle um, previously unseen special relativity questions much more quickly and better than you can if you are simply look, used to looking up formulas. So even though this is way longer than how long it would have taken if I simply looked up the formula, um, I would encourage you to try this longer way. See if you can do this from scratch without looking up any formulas. The only thing you need is the Lorentz transformation, which you hopefully have memorized by now, and the, the concept of four vector um, and knowledge of what physical quantities form four vectors and what quantities don't. So that's it. Um, thank you.